Good morning. Today we are doing a very chaotic, because I didn't really plan it, and I'm just going to go along with it, but kind of a review of some of the stuff that I use to crochet flowers, um, the materials. Actually, I need to go get my yarn and kind of some of the basics of what my thought process is when I come up with patterns. I feel kind of bad because I've promised a lot of patterns. Actually, I didn't promise. I said possibly coming soon every single time. But <laughs> um, I have a lot of patterns that I've been meaning to put out, but I've been very delayed about it because I've been replenishing stock and making new stuff to get ready for markets and stuff that I've signed up for. So I don't have time to sit down and write a pattern, make sure it's well written, get people to test it, um, edit it, and do all of that. It's a lot of work. Um, so I'm not gonna do that right now, but I will show you my thought process so that maybe you guys can just come up with something similar or whatever. Hold on, let me get my yarn though because I want to show you um, the yarn that I use. Okay, now I use a lot of different yarns. It's not anything special. Currently, my favorite is the Hobby um, Friends Cotton Yarn. This one's actually a little bit thick. It's the Friends 8-8 yarn, but my favorite is the Friends, I think it's 8-4 or 4-8 yarn. Um, they're currently, uh, they're not currently out, I am currently out. Um, but they, here's all the details if you wish to see. They come in a lot of different colors. The They are very unfuzzy. Here's, a, here's my little basket of, this is my display yarns. <laughs> this is just a tiny basket that of yarns that I put in the background of my Instagram photos because it's nice and cute. And none of these are unraveled, except this is kind of coming unraveled. But they've got a great selection of colors. This is not sponsored by the way, but Hobby, please send me yarn. Um, look at, they're so cute, like they're all pastel -y. they've got a lot of other colors, um, very light, but the cons of Hobby are one, there's no store, so I can't really see the colors in person, though they have been very accurate to what I see on the photos and then when I get them, um, and also shipping takes a while and you have to pay for it, which is like not cool, and um, what else? Also, the, oh, here's the biggest con. They're always out of stock. Uh, they... Hi, oops, my camera ran out of battery. And it's gonna run out again, but we're just gonna keep going and then charging it a little because I've decided I wanna film right now, so I'm gonna film right now. <laughs> um, but okay, those are the yarns I use. Is that what I was talking about? That, but I also use, uh, I have like a big old ball over here too. Like this is just the, uh, um, from Michaels. I don't even know what it's loops. No. Lion brand. This is the Lion brand yarn, I believe. There's also Bernat, which is usually at Walmart, which is also cheap. And then there's the Michaels new brand, which I don't think I've actually tried yet. But it's just a rebranding of whatever they had before. Um, I also have... That's it. Honestly, just whatever is cheapest. That is what I use. Don't worry too much about like the quality of the yarn. When it's fuzzy, especially with the acrylic yarns, like the Bernat, the Walmart one, um, and one of the Michaels ones, you, you just have to use your lighter and like run it across and it'll burn off all the fuzzies. It's just like one extra step, but if the yarn's a lot cheaper, just get the cheaper one. Um, for wiring, I use floral craft wire. I'm actually out of it right now and I'm using this one. This one. It's about, I don't know. 30 to 40 centimeters long and I say that because I swear every time I order it it's like a slightly different length but normally it's around 30 centimeters this is what it looks like it is I believe 14 gauge to 16 gauge because again it's from like China and sometimes I don't get the same thing even though I'm ordering it from the same listing this is what I normally get and you can see it's like a tiny bit thicker than this one so it's a thicker gauge, and it's also, if you can see here, this is wire that's wrapped in paper, and also normally, I keep saying also, but they have a version of this that comes in green, and I get that one because it's for the stems, so if I like slightly miss a spot when I'm wrapping it, you can't tell as much. This one is a wire wrapped in kind of like a rubbery 
something. I don't really know the technicalities of it. Just get just get a thickish wire. Like this is like I don't know the bounciness of it. Um, I prefer this to the skewers as well because the skewers are not bendable, which actually make them more fragile. And if anyone tries, to okay, I'm dumb. Turns out I can just connect it to the battery pack and it can charge while it's going. Anyway, it's better than the skewers because the wooden skewers, if someone tries to like do this, sometimes it can just snap and it's not repairable. But these ones, which are flexible, are much better. Okay. Okay. What else? I wrote down some stuff that I should talk about. But other things that I use, hot glue gun, um, mine is charging over there. If you can get um, a like rechargeable one, those are best because then you don't have to deal with the wire. But honestly, I started with the Dollarama one. Pretty much everything that I use, I started with at the Dollarama versions. Um, this, oh here, this wiring which I use for the leaves of flowers, if you look... <gasps> Can I just sacrifice this leaf? To oh, here. Do you see if I... Do you see that wire? This green... Focus. Wire inside the leaf. That lets me bend this leaf however I want to bend it. And it is this from Dollarama. Specifically, the one that is wrapped around this wooden block. It also comes in silver. Um, it's just cheap. There's so much of it. It'll last you such a long... I have so many. But, um... It will last you I have so many. Um, a very long time. It's very sturdy. And the other thing is, it still cuts with scissors. But it's very sturdy. But I did have one where you had to cut with wire cutters. And it was a little bit thicker than this one. I think this is 22 to 24 gauge. Oh, I'm like a makeup person. Oh my god. I dropped everything. But that one, it's just too hard to cut with wire cutters. And when I'm... Not really traveling, but like if I if I'm taking my little basket of stuff, oh my god, it's so heavy. And I want to go to like a different area of the house to craft stuff. I just want to minimize how many things I use. So I don't want to bring like regular scissors and like wire cutters and whatever. So I like these. I usually use these for the leaves, anything green, and then I use this one for petals or anything that's not green <laughs> to save the green one. But this is consistently at Dollarama. Um, and what else do I use? This drill from the little basket I have is, if you've seen a reel I posted, what I do is I take the these sticks and I stick it in the drill thing. Let me loosen it. It's an electric drill and it helps me to wind the yarn around. So then I, I do this and then when I spin it, I can just hold the yarn and it spins along the stem and it saves me a lot of time. Um, if you're not good with power tools, this is still okay. Okay, it's it's very easy. Here's the hot glue gun actually. This is a different one. I don't use this one anymore, but I think this one's from Amazon. Everything is fine. You do not need the best materials to make these, okay? It's just it's just whatever you can get. I have like even crochet hooks. These are from the dollar store and I still use it. Although I have to say I do dislike these plastic handles. I like oh, here. There's one here. Oh, this is three. Um, these are rubbery handles. I feel like I don't know why I'm doing this ASMR, but um, it's just a lot more comfortable. I have tried the thing where someone was like, if you put like a tennis ball here, it's like more ergonomical for your hand versus like holding it like this. I honestly just, when my hand gets tired, I just change my grip to a different, and then I just keep changing it and then you do your stretches in the middle. Um, and that's fine. Compression gloves, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, even like, I just have like every single kind of crochet hook and I just use it. The only one that's ever broken for me is these plastic ones. Um, so I like the ones that are one piece or the metal ones that have the rubber thing. Although if you're crocheting an amount of like a normal person, you probably shouldn't break these. <laughs> I think I... Oh wait, this one's like... You can see it's cracking <laughs> down the middle here. Oops. That's not supposed to be there. Um, oops. Uh, what else? I think like 90% of my stuff is from when I started. I ordered a kit on Amazon and it was literally like crochet beginner's kit, like 
35 pieces and it just came with like a bunch of miscellaneous things like um these like i think they're called darning needles darning needles but i prefer sewing needles um yeah i think that's it for like materials i just i get that question asked so much and the type of yarn you use is not important okay you can do this with any type of yarn except for maybe like wool also wool is mega expensive so don't use that um we're not wearing it so it doesn't matter as much what is this we've got the hot glue that i use also from dollarama if you don't have a dollarama it's literally just canadian a dollar store like just go to your dollar store it's way cheaper than michael's oh my gosh i almost just dropped my drill anyway this is just my chaotic bucket of stuff tape i use this tape it's like I also have my safety eyes, which are from Amazon. They're, oh, they're actually not. I keep calling them safety eyes because that's what everyone calls them, but my eyes are not safe. They are not child safe. Um, but they come in this little flower container, and they're just, like, the pieces. Like, they're just the flat edge eyes. Let me find something to show you. Here it is. My dragonfly keychains, and if you can see, it's just the flat edge eyes. There's no like part that goes inside. Although when I did use those, I didn't even bother using the backing. I just put glue and then I stuck it in and then, yeah. Honestly, it's not that great. <laughs> the other ones are probably better, but that's what I use, okay. Um, oh, here are the wire cutters I used to use. But again, it's just like harder on your wrist to cut wire, so these thinner ones are just better. Okay, okay, this is already chaotic. I've talked about like seven different things in no order, but here we go. Okay, what else do I want to talk about? Kind of, okay, let's go over the basics of coming up with a crochet flower pattern. Is this angle weird? I feel like you're looking down at me, but, or down, up, up at me. I'm looking, anyway, the lighting is okay here. It's cold. I'm in my bear sweater. Um, okay, let's go over the basics on how to make a crochet flower pattern because, because why not? I feel like my current primary goal is not to sell crochet flower patterns, so I don't mind like giving out this information. But like to be honest, if you Google it, you're gonna find this information anyway. So let me just compile it for you really quick. And also, it's not gonna be organized anyway. So is this even that useful? I don't know. But. <laughs> Okay, there are a lot of different ways to make the same flower. If you go on YouTube and look up free patterns, first of all, all the simple patterns, I don't know if it's because like crochet is trendy now or whatever, or not, not crochet, like crochet flowers are trendy now, but you can find a lot of different flower patterns for free online. Like I cannot even recommend people to buy my patterns anymore because there's so many free options and I would not myself choose a paid option over a free option so i cannot recommend you go on my etsy and buy my patterns unless it's maybe for like my glaze lily which is hard to find anywhere else but um my initial advice would be to go and look up some beginner tutorials for flowers common ones like the sunflowers daisies puffy tulips start with those try a couple and then kind of get used to assembling and making the flower and then you can kind of go off and try making your own patterns or seeing what works for you it's different for everybody what they prefer you know some people are just magic circle girls and other people are chain guys chain people sorry i didn't mean to gender <laughs> um you know what i mean it's different i am i like chains i hate magic circles but anyway um, blah, 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 I'm reading my notes. No, blah, yeah, okay, but yeah. We're just gonna start here. Okay, so there's two ways to start. Okay, let's say I wanna make a new flower. I don't have an example of a flower that I want to make. Let's just, let's just Google flower, and then the first thing that comes up is what I'm going to try and do, okay? Is it, see, I told you it was gonna be chaotic. You can't complain about it because I warned you that I have no plan with this um geez okay well this is the first picture that came up when i looked up flower okay so for example for these top three flowers okay are 
are you seeing this oh no okay it's just flipped i'm so dumb top three flowers you can see there's like a middle piece and then there's petals now with petals what i think is the easiest is chains but see when you see this you're like oh it's a circle so i should make a magic circle no what's easier is to make what's easier for me is to make a chain and then actually let me just where is a hook i'm gonna use this cotton this crappy cotton yarn because it's the easiest to frog and it's the easiest to show the stitches cotton yarn because when i use the milk cotton yarn sometimes it's really hard to see this actually that's not that bad but it's easier with this one also i don't want to waste my milk cotton yarn by frogging it a bunch of times and then it'll get fluffy but we'll start with a chain. This is like the easiest way to make a petal, okay? This also is not really a tutorial. You're just gonna have to listen to what I'm doing because it's not gonna be that close up. So what you do, you start with your chain. You chain like however many that is approximately the size of the petal that you want to make. I'm just gonna, let's do like 10. Was that 10? I don't know, I wasn't even counting. But you start with this and you're like, Tina, that's not a petal. But what you want to do is you work continuously around in a circle and you keep going and adjust to make the shape of your petal so if you want a thinner petal you might stop with this foundation chain and start making the shape of your petal if that makes sense so for example the most like standard um increase decrease would be like you just go into like a single crochet and then maybe a half and then you would go double double all the way through and then for the last three stitches you do back to half double and then single does that make sense because then it kind of gives you that increase and then that decrease and you go around to the other side so like do you see now this is my chain i have a point and it's like increasing and if i go all okay i guess i'll just do it <laughs> this cotton yarn actually kind of sucks but This makes it the easiest for you to see. Why am I showing you the backside? The stitches. So you can see this is my foundation chain. I have my tip here as a result of doing the single, half double, and then doubles all the way through until I get to the end. Now that again will depend on the shape of the flower that you're going for. So for example, this one has a really thick base. It's also very square. So maybe at this tip, because when you do your foundation chain, you're basically starting at the middle, going to the end, and then this is where you start your, your thing. So what I've made is this shape. Because it's single, half, doubles, all the way through, and then if I decrease again, it'll come back to this thinner edge. I seriously have no idea if this is making sense at all. <laughs> and then for something like this, I might just start with a double, and then just go double all the way through because it's very thick shape. Um, you can also, it doesn't have to be like single half double. You could probably even do like some of them single, half, 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 and then double. And that creates kind of more like this shape. It's like a longer pointy edge. Let me see if there's like an example here. Like something like this flower where... It, it's like a softer bend or whatever, you know what I mean? It's it, You kind of have to experiment with it to get the right shape of the petal. Um, but that's the basics of it. What happens is, let's say I do my half and I go all the way around once I get to the end. End with a half double. Let me just tighten that. What I do, I need more yarn, is you stop here. Oh, actually, here's the other thing. You could just stop here and you have a thin little little thing, right? A thin little petal. Why did I use this yarn again? <laughs> it's so bad. This is what I use for tagging my product. Um, but what I would normally do is I've stopped at this side. I started here, went around, and I'm literally just going to keep working around on this side in a circle. Do a little single crochet here. And then I'm actually going to do multiple singles in here because I noticed that when I did one, it didn't quite give me enough space to get around to the other side. 
you can see now why I'm so bad at following patterns because I just do whatever I want. But there you go. There's your petal. Or leaf. But that's pretty much the basics of how you do a petal. You can change the shape depending on how many doubles or halves you do, or if you add um, like a pico stitch at the end, it'll make it pointier. And actually, let me get a Cosmo, because those are kind of cool. Please. With a Cosmo, what I did is I added a whole bunch of stitches to the one stitch in order to create space to so here, there are a crap ton of stitches in this one stitch. And then in the next layer around, there are three pico stitches, boop, 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 to make this kind of a pattern. And it's not that like, oh, there's like hot glue on the edge of this. Oops. Um, there's not that much of a difference when you look at it just like individually, but when you look at it all together, it is very noticeable, the pico stitches. So it does make a difference, um, depending on what you do, versus like the tulip. These are very round. These are like, do you see that? At the end where I was like, oh, I didn't quite make it around, so I'm gonna put more single stitches in there. The more you do that, the more rounded it's gonna be instead of pointy. So again, this is not, this is just the basics. So you kind of have to experiment it with it to see what you wanna do. You can also, if you wanna make the flower bigger or to be able to add more detail to it, this could be your foundation and then you go around again and you can add like, um, I think I have a piece here. For example, with the Lily of the Valley, I know this isn't a chain, but you start with your base shape and then you go in here and you add your flutter design, right? You could do the same thing on here and have a very wavy petal. Um, if you wanted to add wiring, Normally, I would have done it in that step, <laughs> but um, I'll just show you here with the green wire instead. Normally, I would also use this wire instead of this wire, but just, this is just, I'm just showing you, okay? This is because I've got, I get a lot of questions, so I, I'm, this is me showing you, but what I do is I don't cut this wire because I don't, I'm not good at predicting how much that I will need, but I hold, so I always leave about two inches of space here because that's what I'm going to use to attach this to the other pieces and it helps here if I just fold this down because then it's not sliding back and forth take my string here insert my first stitch the wires in between my hook and my yarn pull it and do my single crochet or whatever it is I want to do and then you just keep doing that it does sometimes help to bend the wire to the approximate shape of the design as uh, before you do it, but I crave efficiency and I just do it hard enough that the wire bends to my will as I'm crocheting and I don't have to worry about it. But do you see that? Actually, even with this, I was, this yarn is really not good. Sorry, I thought this would be a good way to show you, but um, it's actually, covering the wire pretty well so you can see this is coming if i had this straight it would be like pulling in and out of oh my goodness i'm so bad at showing what's happening but you can pull this through so if you bend this it will prevent it from accidentally falling out and you having to redo everything all over again okay i'm not going to finish this because i'm not going to be using this and i'm just going to frog it but that's how that works and then you can fold your your leaf or your pe I keep showing you the back fold your leaf or your petal and it'll keep its shape um and then at the end I'm just gonna take this out because whatever this this part is where you will put all of the leaves together in a circle and then tie yarn around the base boop 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 boop, boop. you know okay I'm gonna take this out because I do not intend to keep keeping this but like see how well this yarn holds its shape compared to the other yarns when you frog it i always test stuff with this yarn because it's so reusable um okay what's next that is how i would make a flower with a chain the other thing is with the petals after you make your first petal 
you can use a different color on the outside to do a color change. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing a color change in the middle of the petal just because it's it's not easy. <laughs> okay, next step. It's not really a step, but if you do a magic circle, I'm just going to take this because I, I have it here, but Lily of the Valley, for example, very good magic circle start. Um, sunflower, daisy, the center pieces, it's all just big circles, and then you take your two pieces, cut, put them together, and then you just... Uh, you apply the same concept as like the, the petals for example okay I'll give you an example this is your initial you know it's just a circle and then you increase and this just singles up until you get to the size that you want once you get here you just go single I, I don't actually remember but single half double double, half, single. Slip stitch, right? Single, double, half, single, half, double, double, half, single, slip stitch. Repeat. Or, depending on how big you want these to be, or how sharp you want them to be, you could do, like, a more drastic size change, or a less drastic size change. You could add a pico at the end, and it'll make it a lot pointier. Right? I'm not going to do it because it's a lot of work to do. This I don't do tutorials, okay? This is I'm just this is an example. If you have like a sunflower, you have your two circle pieces together and then when you're connecting them, you do like for each petal a single double um or single half double double half single slip stitch. That is basically how you do petals on circles for every single kind of flower that's made that way. Now you can even go up to like triple, like low-key the pattern for forget-me-nots is just magic circle, no center piece. You don't make the circles like you do for sunflowers and daisies. You literally just go a circle and then chain three, triple, triple, chain three, slip. And you <laughs> repeat that for as many petals as you want. There's a free pattern for you there. That's the whole pattern. Um, so really easy, okay? Honestly, for forget-me-nots and stuff, the hardest part of making them is just the assembly and it's so tedious and it takes forever, but there's that. <sighs> what else can I go over? Color changes, not only can you change yarn, but recently I've learned that you can just use eyeshadow mixed with, at Michael's they have this, it's like a transparent powder that you're supposed to wet and you can mix in with stuff and it's like a fixative to make sure that the color stays. I think it's for paint. They also have one that's glitter and low-key I want to try it, but that will make sure because eyeshadow kind of after a while, if you just keep like touching it, it will just rub off. Not completely, but the color will disappear, which would be sad. So I use that to make sure that the color stays. Um, yeah, that's how you make flowers. That's how I make flowers, correction. I think that's it. I just wanted to make a little video to kind of talk about this angle so weird kind of talk about how I do it because I'm high key not going to be able to put out any patterns for a hot minute. Um, so if you wanted to figure anything out yourself, that's a good way to do it. The best way to do it is just to go on YouTube, learn a whole bunch of different flower crochet patterns and designs, and then take the techniques from those designs and apply them when you're trying to make your own patterns. It helps to draw it out and it helps to have very low commitment when you try it so that you're open to trying a whole bunch of different ways of doing it. Again, there's a lot of different ways to make the same thing, so the only way to know is try it. See what you like. But yeah. Oh, the only thing I don't recommend is I did try using Sharpie on yarn to color and draw designs, like marker and stuff. Yarn is too fuzzy for that. I think paint might work, but markers did not work well for me. So yeah, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them down below. I'm not good at structured videos because my thinking has no structure. Um, and if I want it to, that's too much effort. <laughs> so yeah. But yeah, thanks for watching. Um, there will be a Kawaii Con vlog from Vancouver coming up later. Jackie is helping me with that and she's a little bit busy, so we're going to be nice to her. I'm also going to Hawaii next weekend, so that's going to be 
both the Kauai Con Hawaii convention and also a vacation for me. So if I'm a little slow on the videos, this is also why I, I came up with this video kind of last minute. But um, Yeah, if you do want written patterns, I do have some on my Etsy. I do recommend you look on YouTube because there's so many free ones now. Um, it does kind of suck when people just steal patterns and post them online. But well, you know what? We're not going to go into that, actually. Use your brain. It's easy, I promise. Just, just try it, and then it's really fun. And it's like problem solving, and it's great. Okay? Okay. Goodbye. I'll see you in the next one. Sorry, it was chaotic. Bye. Mm -hmm.